errors of the Hebrew Israelites and we're going to focus today on marriage. When, I, when it comes to marriage itself, God defined marriage. He created it and defined it. So we're going to look at the affirmative of how God defined marriage to be. Also, they point to Abraham. Abraham in Genesis 16, 1 through 4, and Genesis 25, 1 through 2. Between those two passages, we know that Abraham had at least three wives. He had Sarah. Hagar, and then later on he married Keturah. Now Hagar may not have been his legitimate wife, but because he laid with her and conceived a child with her, many people consider that to be a wife. Let's continue. King David, that's a big one. King David, uh, in 1 Samuel 18, 27, he married someone named Michal or Michal or however you pronounce it, but that was his first wife. In 1 Samuel 25 and 42, he married a lady named Abigail. 1 Samuel 25, 43, he married another lady named Ahinoam. Okay, however you pronounce it. But by the time he gets to Bathsheba, we know that David had at least eight wives. That was his eighth wife. Even though Deuteronomy 17, 17, which is specifically talking about a king, says a king must not multiply wives, we see that David was doing it anyway, but then we're supposed to understand that 2 Samuel 12, 8, he has God's blessing to do so. In 12, 8, he has God's blessing to do so. Um, I was even told that God himself had multiple wives. Yeah, God himself, uh, God himself. Uh, Hebrew Israelite took me to Jeremiah 31, 32, where God is talking about both Israel and Judah and saying that, I was a husband to them. God has joined together. Let no one separate. Jesus says right here, these two and only two will become one flesh, not one man and two women or three women or four women or seven or a hundred. No, one man, one woman, King David, Solomon, none of them. Jesus goes right back to the beginning and mentions word for word, quote for quote, cut and paste, way back in Genesis 2, 21 through 24. God said in Genesis. Interesting, isn't it? Why didn't he mention any of the marriages of the patriarchs? Because that's not what God designed, that it was never God's intent. Interesting, isn't it? Why didn't he mention any of the marriages of the patriarchs? Because that's not what God designed, that it was never God's intent for marriage. Why didn't he mention any of the marriages of the patriarchs? Because that's not what God designed, that it was never God's intent for marriage. Before I get started, I'm gonna read out of two translations. It's the Bible of 1382, John Wycliffe Bible, Deuteronomy 17 and 17, the king shall not have full many wives that draw his soul to over mischief and mis 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 fleshness. Neither he shall have great, great burthens or bundles of silver and gold. Right? We're also going to read another translation. Okay. The contemporary English translations, many of these, and a king must not have a lot of wives. They might tempt him to be unfaithful to the Lord. Finally, the king must not try to get huge account amounts of silver and gold. And we'll get into that later in the lesson. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah Bahashim. Kwadash and double honors to the elder apostles and even the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you other brethren, you fellow believers, and shalom to the elect. I want to go in this video um, with this guy as you've seen. It was another guy did a video on this who claims he's deep, and I just didn't have enough time in the intro to put that in there. But he went into the blue letter. You know, to understand these, these scriptures, you have to go deep, you know, you have to sometimes go into the, the deeper ends of the scriptures. And, you know, through the spirit, Apostle Tahar brought out the blue letter, and that's what this 
couple of these guys do, but then you got to go a little bit even deeper because they won't explain it all the way. So this guy, he's kind of like um, speaking of polygamy, God wasn't for it. And that's what he says when obviously the Most High accepted it. In fact, when you go to Abraham with Sarah and uh, Hagar, Rachel, Leah, um, and um, I can't remember the other two, but <clears throat> Rachel, Leah, Bilhah, and so forth. The Most High still ordained it. He ordained it, and he did as he saw fit. You know? Now, you had wives. You had uh, concubines. It's just what it is. There were also laws on how to deal with menstruous women and how the circumstances are supposed to take place when it comes to that. The reason why he made man the way he made him, women the way he made him. But we're going to read Deuteronomy 17 and 17, but I want to go to here, the, uh, Matthew 1 and 1, the book of the generations of Yahweh Shah, they see Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, and it goes all the way down and, mix, and mentions uh, these men, okay, and um, them that come out of the uh, lineage um, even going back to Boaz who was um, in their lineage who had a heathen woman Ruth right who brought forth I believe Obed um, and then uh, Jesse David and so forth so that's what it was really all about really bringing the lineage because the man is the one is the lineage but see, these beta male speaking men, they don't care for authority. In fact, the majority of Eves kind of understand it. They just screwed in the society to believe different. But the majority of them do understand it. Right? Half these men that speak this madness is messing around with other women. <laughs> you know, if that was the case, then you would have... If you lined up 50 women, right, it's way more women than men. And then how would you procreate, man? She's pregnant. Now what you supposed to do? He's supposed to sit back like a beta simp on the side? Nah, man. You know, we ain't buying it and we ain't going for it. But let's read Deuteronomy 17 and 17. And I'm going to get some commentary on this to go uh, into this. Deuteronomy 17 and 17. You got to understand uh the time that was what was going on as well it says neither shall he multiply I'm not going to read the whole thing it's talking about the duties of the king neither shall he multiply wives to himself that his heart turn not away so right there when I saw that I knew what it was talking about right neither shall he greatly multiply him to himself silver and gold so was it wrong to multiply wives? No. Was it wrong to multiply silver and gold? You're a king. <laughs> no. But we're going to show you why. Because if I say it, you know, Jake ain't going to believe it. So we got to read it. Okay, this is the Cambridge Bible Schools. It says, Solomon, Solomon notoriously did so. His marriages were foreign princes, princesses where where for political ends, but introduce heathen cults into Israel. So you got to go into the time of us coming out of Egypt. Jake was still seduced by the culture of Egypt. Right? This is the same thing Paul went through. And I, I did a video on this before when he said a bishop must be blameless and have one wife. Now that is he supposed to have one wife? No, because what if a bishop had four wives? What was he supposed to do? If he had four wives, what was he supposed to do? Cast off the other three? Said, nope, I'm supposed to have one wife. Now you push that woman to commit adultery. The reason why he was saying that because it was a lot of whoredom running rampant in Israel. And what he did, he said the bishop must be blameless because the bishop wouldn't have known that this woman had already slept with six, seven women. I mean, seven men or more. So he had to remain his purity. So this, you can read the commentary on this. So this is why he said a bishop must be blameless and have one wife. Because he, you know, you didn't want to 
inadvertently lay with some a woman that had about ten husbands already. And this is a fact when you look into the uh, uh, the um, the story, or when you actually look into the the text, right? When you really look into the context of everything that was happening, happening. Okay. Anyway, and this is the same thing here, man. You know, a king. We and they're going into what what happened with Solomon. Okay. So it says, if Israel. This is the Kiel Delitzi biblical commentary. If Israel, when dwelling in the land which was given it by the Lord or possession, should wish to appoint a king like all the nations round about, it was to appoint a man whom Yahweh, uh, its God, should choose, and that from among its brethren, i.e., from its own people, not a foreigner or an Israelite. So I want to get to the point. Okay, it says, I'm trying to, it's, you know, this, this stuff is really long. So you're trying to, I'm just trying to hit the points. The rules are laid down for the king, right? In the first place, he was not to keep many horses or lead uh, back the people to Egypt to multiply horses because Yahweh had forbidden the people to return thither by the way, the notion was modern of modern critics that were an illusion is the uh, prohibition to the constitution of, of the king under Solomon is so far having and found any foundation that was reason assigned, namely the fear uh, the fear lest the king should lead back the people, right? The king should lead back the people to Egypt from the love of horses. So you can imagine if Yahawashah came here today and brought a bunch of people out of Egypt, but this place was still going on, the mindset of people having that addiction to like Sodom, wanting to go back. And what the Lord doesn't, doesn't want is you to take on the characteristics of this kind of leader and multiplying yourselves, the wives and the gold and the silver, and then getting headstrong because you can lead the people back into that mindset. Okay. Um, to end that should uh, multiply horses. Uh, in so much as the time had uh, then long gone by the way th thought could have been ent entertained of leading back the people to Egypt. Right. This is a whole lot on here. So there's no way I'm going to read all of this. Um, it says, let me see here. If you want to read more, you can go to the verse and because um, it's a lot on here. But if you read it, you'll get an understanding. But such a reason would be quiet in the place of Moses time and only then when it would not seem impossible to reunite the broken band and when the people were ready to express their longing and even their intention to return to Egypt on the very slightest occasion where is the reason assigned a prohibition might have furnished Solomon with an excuse for regarding the prohibition itself as merely a temporary one merely a temporary one which was no longer binding. So let me get more to the point. The second admonition also that the king was not to take to himself many wives and turn away his heart from the Lord, nor greatly multiply himself silver and gold, right? Because you would have had, you, had, you would have Jake kings who would not only have wives of, a, of his own, but wives of the other nations. And it says, can be explained without the hypothesis that there was an illusion of Solomon's reign through the, the king transgressed. Let me get to the point. A richly furnished harem and the acclamation or, or, or accumulation of silver and gold were inseparably connected with the luxury of Oriental monarchs generally, so that the fear was a very natural one that the future king of Israel might follow the general customs of the heathen in these respects. 
So it was never nothing wrong for a man, a king to have wives, right? But it was not permitted for him to follow the, uh, the customs of the heathens. Let's go to Proverbs 31, because one woman can, can destroy you. It don't take many women to destroy you. Look at Jake today. Proverbs 31 and 1. The words of King Leomel, the prophecy his mother taught him, going into Solomon, what my son, and what my son of my womb, and what my son of my vows, give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroy of kings. Right? We've seen an incident of what happened to Samuel. Not, not Samuel, Samson. How, how the woman would just nagging him and nagging him until he gave up the secrets or whatever. This don't have to, it don't have to be two wives and three wives and four wives. It's, that could be one wife, man. You're not supposed to put strength into any woman. Period. So then he quotes uh, Genesis where it says, um, you're you supposed to leave your house and cleave to, you know, one wife. Um, now, let's go to Second Chronicles first. I'm trying to make this fast. And I'm going to get to the point. This is Rohabom's family. Um, Rohabom took him Malahath, the daughter of Jeremoth, the son of David, to wife. He also went into uh, Machal, I think, uh, Saul's daughter given to David, I believe. And Abihail, the daughter of Eliab, Eliab the son of Jesse, which bear him children, Yesh, Yush, the Shemariah, and Zaham. And after her, he took Ma'aka, the daughter of Absalom. Let me get to the point. And Rohabom made Abijah, the son of Ma'aka, Ma Ma the chief, to the ruler among his brethren, for he thought to make him king. Um, let me, I must have skipped some. Here we go, 21. And Rohabom loved Ma'aka, Ma the daughter of Absalom, above all his wives and his concubines. So when the scripture says you leave and you cleave to your house, I mean cleave to your wife, and you become one flesh. Yes, you're one flesh with that wife. And you always had men that would love one woman more than the other. But it wasn't that, and it, and it wasn't against the law. There's no law in the Bible that says you must only have one wife. These guys are just making this up, man. Let me go into the commentary when it says you must cleave the, uh, and go with one wife. I'm going to just get to the point because it's a lot in these commentaries. But if you read it, you know, you can pretty much be spot on. It says the relationship of man to his wife is proclaimed to be closer than that to his father and mother. By the word shall cleave unto his wife. One flesh is asserted the sanctity of marriage. Polygamy is not excluded, definitely. You know, but the mon monogamy seems to be implied as the words cleave. And they're just going into this, and they didn't really have to say that, but that's good that they made that point, right? It was always custom. That's why you had men, even with the time of Paul, they had wives, man. They had wives. What's up with Jake, man? And then the thing about it, women know this. There's women who will mess with men right now that have a, a, a lot of, that, that have wives or wife. Let me just say, when you have a woman you're messing with. So what about uh, Jacob, you know? Uh, um, in, the, in, the, in a patriarch out of him, he said, oh, and, man, come on, man. You got women who, like you more than other women want you. What happened with Solomon, he went off because his wives turned away his heart. And one wife can do that. I don't know what's wrong with these jakes. It don't take a bunch of wives to do that. It only take one wife to do that. That's crazy. But that's the mindset. That's the mindset of these jakes. So to recap, recap it all when you read Deuteronomy Let's see what uh, Matthew 5 and 17 says. He brought that out. Think not that I come to destroy the law, nor the prophets. I come not to destroy, but to fulfill. He was not against the law, statutes, and commandments, man. There was nothing in there about that. But you can see what Paul would have had to go through, like we teach today, is best not to have 
a, a woman or a bunch of wives and to deal with the heartache behind that. But there's not no law against it where if a brother did have another wife who, who wanted to deal with him, well, guess what? He's one flesh with that woman. And guess what? Because she's the second wife is his wife. Guess what? She's one flesh with him. There's still one flesh. Somehow he's kind of bringing it out to that. He's taking your manhood, your power away. Somehow he's bringing it out. It says one flesh. That, that means that's y'all too. One flesh, just two. It never said two. It just said one flesh. And it said it even did say two. You are one flesh with her. You guess what? He's one flesh with the next woman. He's one flesh with the next woman. If the most high didn't allow it, then it would have been a sin from the beginning. And the Lord wouldn't allow uh, David, Solomon, Rohabom, and various other men to have wives and concubines. It was meant to be. The scripture says the Lord is a man of war. What you have in war? You have kings, you know, you have rulers, you have leaders, you have destruction. And then there's a whole lot of madness that he said. Right? What the Lord didn't want is like what uh, Achan did. Okay? And I can't remember, but various others did, uh, uh, Saul did, that went and took after the manner of the heathen. And that had nothing to do with woman. And guess what? He was destroyed for that. And woman is a tool used for that as well. That's crazy, man, that these guys, this is their mindset. It's a lot I want to cover, but I can't cover it all. I just wanted to get to that point. There's nothing wrong with having more than one wife.